The aggregate demand, aggregate supply model, or ADAS model for short, is the essential tool to model the macroeconomy at A level. There are two ways the ADAS model can be constructed. Firstly, the levels version, which analyzes how the economy's planned spending and planned supply are related to the economy's price level, the average level of prices as measured by an index, such as the CPI or the GDP deflator. The second version looks at the rates of growth in output associated with different rates of inflation, expressed as percentages. This version is more complex and is not generally used at A-level. An economy's aggregate demand, or AD, is comprised of private sector spending, of which consumer spending is the largest component, spending by firms on capital goods, called investment, government spending on public goods, merit goods and transfers, plus net export spending, which is overseas spending on an economy's exports, less spending on imports. From this, we derive the AD equation, which is AD equals C plus I plus G plus X minus M. In this simple example, we can see how the components of AD will respond to different hypothetical price levels. The model starts by assuming the quantity of money is constant and nominal wages are fixed. All other variables other than the price level are also assumed to be constant. So, at a price level index of 100 in our example, consumer spending is 85 billion, of which investment is 5 billion, government spending is 10 billion, and trade is in the balance, with both exports and imports at 10 billion. This gives us an AD of 100 billion. At a lower hypothetical price level, say at 96, AD increases to 115 billion, and at a higher price level, at 104, AD falls to 85 billion. Looking at the relationship between AD and the price level graphically, we see that an AD curve will slope downwards. A fall in the price level, from P to P1, will cause the quantity demanded to increase from Y to Y1. The downward slope of AD is explained in terms of the following effects. Firstly, Prices and consumer spending are inversely related via a wealth effect. If we assume households' nominal income is fixed, a change in the price level of all goods will alter what households can purchase when they spend all their nominal income. That is, their real income adjusts inversely with prices. A lower price level means consumers purchase more, and a higher one means they can purchase less. Secondly, at a lower price level means households and firms need to keep less of their assets in a liquid form and can deposit excess assets with banks as savings or purchase stocks and shares or, in the case of firms, buy bonds. This extra liquidity into the financial system puts downward pressure on interest rates, which can stimulate investment and consumer spending. This is called the interest rate effect. Thirdly, the exchange rate effect indicates that, at a lower price level, interest rates will fall and overseas demand for a country's assets will also fall, reducing the demand for the currency and its exchange rate. This encourages export sales and discourages imports, creating a positive net export effect. If we now hold the price level constant, these effects are put on hold and other factors come into play which shift the whole position of the AD curve. Shifts from changes related to consumption include changes in decisions to save, changes in confidence levels and expectations, and changes in the quantity of money or availability of credit. For example, decisions to save more will result in a shift to the left in the AD curve. Shifts from changes in investment can also arise from changes in the money supply, which affect interest rates and business decisions. Shifts also arise from changes in business confidence and expectations. A dip in business confidence will shift the AD curve to the left. Shifts in AD can also arise from decisions by governments to spend more or less, for example, on infrastructure projects or on education and healthcare. Finally, shifts can arise from changes in net exports, such as those caused by changes in exchange rates or a country's competitiveness. The fall in sterling after Brexit gave a short-term boost to UK exports 
and shifted AD to the right. In terms of aggregate supply, AS, the relationship between it and the price level is more complex and controversial. Historically, classical economists assumed that a country's output was not determined by the price level, which they regarded as a nominal value, because, they argued, nominal values cannot affect real values such as output and employment. Graphically, the AS curve would be vertical. In contrast, Keynesian economists assumed that supply could adjust to demand, and the only factor determining the level of output and employment would be the position of the AD curve, hence the AS curve is horizontal. To solve this dilemma, modern economists differentiate the short-run AS curve, called SRAS, and the long-run AS curve, called LRAS, and also accept that, in the short run, SRAS is upward sloping. The sticky wage theory is the primary explanation of the upward slope of SRAS. Given that nominal wages are slow to adjust in the short run as workers are on fixed contracts, a change in the price level will impact on profits. For example, a rise in the price level will mean that revenue will increase while labour costs remain fixed at the unadjusted nominal level. Hence profit margins will rise. This provides firms with a short-term opportunity to generate a profit by supplying more. A fall in the price level will reduce revenue relative to inflexible labour costs, and supply will be cut back to avoid losses. Sticky price theory suggests that producer prices for some goods may be slow to adjust to changes in the general price level because there are costs to firms of changing prices, known as menu costs. So, for example, a rise in the general price level, not matched by an immediate rise in some firms' prices, will cause these firms to be more competitive, with an incentive to produce more. A fall in the general price level will make those producers with sticky prices less competitive, and they will cut back on production. Lastly, information failure can also help explain the positive slope of the SRAS curve. Suppliers may, wrongly, take the general price level as an indication of the specific market conditions facing them. For example, if the price level is rising, firms may assume their prices will also rise and increase their production. The extent to which SRAS adjusts to new price levels, that is, the elasticity of short-run supply, will vary considerably from industry to industry and depend upon how close the economy is to its natural rate of output. With no slack in the economy, it is unlikely that output can increase at all, and the SRAS curve becomes vertical. If we hold the price level constant, a change in any other factor associated with supply will shift the SRAS curve. This includes, firstly, expectations about the future price level. For example, if the price level is expected to rise next year, rational producers may expect workers to bid for increases in nominal wages to maintain their same real wage. Also, other input costs will rise as other firms in the supply chain will also increase their prices. This may lead them to plan to produce less this year, and SRAS will shift to the left. SRAS will also shift as a result of changes in the availability of workers and in the level of capital stock. New technology will also affect SRAS, given its effect on production costs. For example, Innovation and the use of newer technology will shift SRAS to the right, given that it will increase labour productivity and reduce labour costs. Finally, unexpected changes in supply conditions, called supply shocks, can cause fluctuations in the SRAS curve. For example, a sudden fall in oil or commodity prices will push SRAS to the right. If we look further in the long run, then the quantity and quality of the economy's factors of production are more important in determining output, with the price level becoming largely irrelevant. The level of output in the long run, called the natural rate of output or the level of potential output, can shift following changes in the quantity of factors, such as migration of labour or the quality of factors, such as education and skill levels. The natural rate of output also depends on cultural factors and the use of technology. What is clear is that a stable price level will reduce distortions in perception and allow decision-making to be more rational, 
as well as reduce unnecessary and volatile changes in output and employment above or below the stable natural rate, a clear reason why policymakers employ inflation targeting policies. To see more videos, go to www.economicsonline.co.uk.